Hello and welcome. Starting off the news this week, I'd just like to quickly mention SpaceX's Starship aborted launch attempt on Monday. The American company was attempting to test what will be the most powerful rocket ever launched to space, but announced shortly before launch that a frozen pressurant valve would likely delay it. Sure enough, the launch was eventually called off and the company planned to go for another attempt this Thursday. Starship is intended to be a hyper-reusable rocket. Both stages are planned to be fully reusable, with the company hoping to be able to use the same craft multiple times a day for various tasks. The ship should, eventually, be versatile enough to complete tasks from transporting people around the world faster than airlines to sending up massive groups of satellites, all the way to sending people back to the moon and beyond to Mars. And in the paleontology news this week, we first up have the very exciting publication of the oldest known bat fossils in the world. These fossils represent a new species of an already named genus, called Icaronic teres gunelli. They date back to around 52 million years ago in the early Eocene epoch, and have been found in the Green River Formation of Wyoming. This formation is well known for preserving some of the other earliest bat fossils, but the two beautiful specimens of Icaronic teres gunelli come from lower down in the stratigraphy of this formation than any others, indicating that these are now the oldest known. The fossils themselves are amazingly well preserved, are fully articulated and allow for some much needed analysis of their anatomy. Interestingly, this discovery also allowed paleontologists to realise that the Green River bats, which all fall into one of two families, represent a separate archaic radiation of bats unrelated to all lineages leading to modern groups, suggesting that these remarkable flying mammals exploded in diversity very early on in their evolution. Also in the news, we have a new dinosaur this week. A new genus and species of Pachycephalosaur, the famous bone-headed dinosaurs, has been named from the latest Cretaceous Hell Creek formation of North America. Called Platytholus clemensi, it's based on a partial skull that shows several unique features and is found to be closer related to Prenocephaly than to Pachycephalosaurinae, being intermediate in size between the other Pachycephalosaurs of the formation. So, a very interesting study there, and welcome, Platytolus. Also this week was the amazing news of evidence for the oldest therizinosauroids and trudontids being found in the UK. This paper applies different machine learning models to samples of theropod teeth from microvertebrate sites dating to the mid-Jurassic in various localities in the UK. Incredibly, this analysis was able to identify at least three distinct types of dromaeosaur teeth, plus therizinosaur and trudontid teeth, therefore extending the confirmed range of these latter two groups back about 27 million years. These dinosaurs, which are all members of the larger grouping Maniraptora, had already been hypothesized to have originated sometime in the Jurassic, but were incredibly rare from this time period. These new findings, though, indicate that many raptorans were already pretty diverse by the mid-Jurassic, apparently having diversified even before the breakup of Pangaea. It's an absolutely amazing discovery and shows how useful applying machine learning methods to paleontology is and will continue to be. Up next, we have the continuation of the Tully Monster Wars. The Tully Monster, scientifically called Tully Monstrum gregarum, is a very controversial animal that's known from many specimens found in the Maison Creek Lagerstatt of Illinois, dating back about 309 million years to the late Carboniferous period. But what sort of animal it is exactly is hotly debated, as you can learn about in a video we did on this subject a few years ago. Anyway, recent papers seem to favour the Tully monster's identity as a vertebrate of some sort, but now this new publication argues against that again. Paleontologists applied 3D surface scanning and micro-CT scanning techniques to over 150 specimens of the monster, finding that the anatomical structures reported by other studies as showing a vertebrate affinity, things like muscle fibres, a trilobed brain and fin rays, are not actually comparable to those structures in vertebrates, and that the body segmentation of the fossils are unlike vertebrates. Instead, they favour an invertebrate identity, again, though exactly which type of invertebrate is still unclear. 
Well, I think it's safe to say that this is definitely not the end to the Tully Monster debate, and we'll just have to see what's published next. And that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on Sunday.